Hey, this is René, and this is the third part of the Super Trend Expert Advisor programming tutorial. In the last tutorial, we uh, looked at the uh, position or the, the signal um, um, definition here, which is a um, buy signal condition and a sell signal condition. And we already managed to um, put these conditions in if statements so that we will um, receive. Um, information if there is a signal. What we want to do in this video is we want to take these signals and turn them into trading signals, uh, trading, yeah, signals and open positions. So first of all, um, we want to include a file and you can do this by writing this uh, hashtag include um, a statement here and then we have to provide a path. The path starts in the include folder here in the navigator and we go to the trade folder and then to the trade.mqh file which is inside of this folder. You can have a look at this file but this may be kind of confusing. This is a so-called class and if you never heard of uh, object-oriented programming this will be confusing for you so just yeah make sure that you understand how to use this class. If you really want to have the in-depth knowledge, you will have to learn a little bit more about object-oriented programming first. This is a, um, a topic which I will not cover in this tutorial, but check out the links in the description. You will find a link to a complete course where I teach MT5 programming and object-oriented programming is a part of this course. So, but for this short tutorial, it's just important that we are able to create objects from this class. The class is called C trade. C stands for class, and trade is um, yeah. C trade is pretty much the name of the class, and we can now create object variables of type C trade. What we can do is we can take this object variable and open positions. And this is super easy. We just write tr trade, which is the name of this object variable. Then we have this dot operator here, and we can then access all the functions uh, functions that are publicly accessible for us. For example, a by function. And you can already see in the um, uh, parentheses here, we have the option to provide several parameters. First of all, we can declare the volume, which is just the lot size that will be opened. Um, I always recommend writing a input um, variable of type double for this. So we can just choose this lots variable as a first parameter for the buy function. Then we can provide a symbol. We, of course, take the chart symbol because this expert advisor only works with the chart um, uh, where is it? Where it is uh, attached to. And then we can provide a price, ASL, and to take profit. We do not want to do this yet. We simply want to copy this for the sell site here. And we then want to open a sell position if there's, there's a sell signal. So make sure to not forget the semicolon as I did here. And if you compile this and run the program, you will see whenever there is a buy or sell signal, we know open positions. And yeah, we get a lot of positions and these positions are never closed, which is not perfect. So let's go back to the code. And for example, we can say if there's a buy position, we want to close a open sell position. So how, how can we do this? Um, in this program, we only want to use one trade or one open position. So what we can do is we can create a unsigned long variable, which is um, the ticket number of the currently open position. Unsigned long is just like integer, uh, uh, um, a number, but a long data type is a bigger number. So you can store bigger values inside of it. And the unsigned long means that there cannot be any negative values, um, but the uh, numbers can be even bigger. And this is because if we are able to create a buy position, we can move this inside of a if statement and we can check oops if this operation was successful and we can check if um, result if the return code of this was um, trade return code red code done and if this operation was successful then wow 
Then we can say we want to update the ticket variable and we want to store the value of resize order inside of it. And all these functions, the buy, the resize red code, and the resize order function, they are all part of the C trade class. And you can access them by using the start operator after writing the name of the variable. And you can have a look at all these functions. And for example, this resize red code function can be used after a operation, like a buy operation, to check if this was a successful operation. If it was a successful operation, it shall, um, this result red code should return trade red code done, which is yeah, simply part of a enumeration like this enum timeframes. And then we can check what the resulting order from this operation was. And we can store this inside of the ticket variable. And we can do the same for the sell operation. So let's say trade.sell, we check if this was successful and then we store it inside of this um, ticket variable. And this way we can make sure that before we open a, um, uh, a, 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 a buy position, we can check if ticket is greater than zero and in this case, we can go ahead and check if we are able to select a position using this ticket number. So we can say we want to select an open position using this ticket number here. And if this was successful, then we want to check what the um, order type is. So we can check position um, uh, get integer which can be used to receive a specific parameter of this currently selected position and for example we can provide the position type here as a parameter and if we have a look at the position get integer function in the uh, in the documentation you can see there's only one parameter requested and this is of type enum position property integer so we can choose any of these identifiers to receive a um, a return value and you can read about this in the this description column for example for the position type we will receive the position type which is of type enum position type so we can compare this to op uh, uh, no position type cell and if there is a cell position open then we can say trade position close and we can provide the ticket number to close this position and we can for example, make a print statement here and say a position um, ticket was closed like this. And if we do it like this, this should make sure that we open a position, uh, that we close a buy position before we open a sell position. So we simply copy this block for the second body of the second if statement. And here we say if we're able to select a position and the position type is position type buy in this case we want to close it and yeah open the sale position afterwards oh and there's a problem there is a variable inside of the c trade class which is called ticket so we have to rename it to for example position ticket so we just rename this global variable and say position ticket instead of ticket and of course we have to exchange it everywhere in the code where we already used it so always write position ticket now since we renamed it. Uh, oh, there are more uh, uh, users of this ticket variable. There's a lot of users like this. And now all errors are gone and we can rerun the program. And we should see that if there is a signal and we have an open position, this position should be closed at, as, uh, as we see here. And you can see um, in the journal, whenever a position is closed, we get this um, uh, line here, which says that a position was closed. Yeah, this is working really good, I think. And you can see, of course, um, in the graph, you can already make your first tests here. So let me walk you through the changes that we applied in this video. So first of all, we included the Ctrade class by using this path, which starts in the uh, include folder here. After doing this, we now 
are able to use the ctrade class. So we create an object variable which is named trade and which is of type ctrade. We use this object variable then to open positions later on, but first of all, we also declare an uh, unsigned long variable which is called position ticket. We declare these two variables at the global scope, so not inside of any variable um, function, because if you declare a variable inside of a function, this variable will then be reset if the function terminates. So if the function ends, a variable which is declared inside of this function will also be deleted from the memory. But if you declare variables on the global scale, they are not, um, or they are only deleted from the memory if the program is um, uh, ends. So let's move to our on tick function. Here we changed the piece of code which is written after a um, after. There is a buy or sell signal. So let's have a look at this buy signal here. First of all, we want to check if there is a value stored inside of this position ticket variable which is greater than zero. Because in this case, there was a position ticket stored inside of this position ticket variable. Then we try to select this position using the position select by ticket function. And you can see there's only one parameter which is a ticket number. And then we select a um, uh, position. This is necessary because we then have access to the position get integer function as it is written here in this note. The position get integer function now allows us to receive the position type using the position type identifier. And we can then um, compare this position type to the position type cell identifier. And if there is an open cell position, we then use the trade object here. And um, we use the position close function of the C trade class to close a position. And um, yeah, this position close function has one parameter, or it can have a um, yeah ticket variable as a parameter, so the function knows what ticket you want to close. If we close a position, we then make a print. Uh, we then make a um, or we, we we write a text line in the journal, so we know what happened. After closing a position, we then open a new position, in this case a buy position, because there was a buy signal. Then we check if, we're, if we were able to send this um, uh, order to the broker. And if we were able to do so, we can be pretty sure that there is a result order that um, comes from this operation. We then store this order in the position ticket variable. This is it, pretty much. For the sales side, we do exactly the same, but it is not the same because we do it uh, the other way around. So we check if there is an open buy position. If there is one, we close it, and then we open a sale position. What we can do here is we can, of course, write some more information inside of our chart comment here. For example, we can say, uh, we can say position, uh, position ticket and we write the position ticket of the currently open position in the comment. So this is it for now. So in the next part, we will have a look at TP, SL and maybe even at the trailing stop. So make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any videos. And also make sure to click the like button and um, yeah, just recommend this video to some of your trading buddies so they will learn more about automated trading and they can improve their trading. So, yeah, this is it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Goodbye.